What is up everybody? Welcome to another Magic Arena video. This is a really, really fun one. Uh, this is the Green Black Citadel deck. Uh, this one's been running around Arena quite a bit. There's a couple different builds. Some of them are Sultai or Bugs. Some of them are just Golgari. Uh, I'm sure some people have been brewing with different strategies. I know uh, Day9 did a Fibblethip uh, version of this deck, which was actually really fun. But um, this one is the Green Black version, and the namesake card is Bolus's Citadel. So this is a new one from War of the Spark. Uh, you may look at the top card of your library at any time. Uh, you can play the top card of your library. If you cast a spell this way, though, you're going to pay the life equal to its converted mana cost instead of paying its actual mana cost. And then you can tap it and sacrifice 10 non-land permanents, and then each opponent automatically loses 10 life. So clearly a very powerful card. A little bit difficult to cast with that three black uh, and three color or three of any color, but definitely, definitely a big payoff. The combo here is with... Uh, Wild Growth Walker. So it's a really interesting one. So it's a two drop one three whenever a creature you control explores you put a one one counter on it and you gain three life. Important to note every creature in this deck is three mana or less. So you're going to start at least netting uh, life long term because of things like Lanawar Elves, Seeker Squire, things like that. Now, ordinarily, Lanawar Elves does not explore, but the other piece to this is Path of Discovery, which means every creature you play will explore as soon as it enters the battlefield. So not only do things like Seeker Squire, uh, Jade Light Ranger, uh, Branch Walker, things like that already explore, uh, and in the case of Jade Light Ranger, explore twice, but Path of Discovery is adding a trigger to that, which means every single creature that you play is going to explore, which is going to gain you life, put a counter on the, the Wild Growth Walker, and ideally dig you further and further into your deck. Um, now, something important to note here, it is very, very possible to just keep hitting lands, in which case you can't really do too much about that. The big uh, kind of counter to that is playing the Wayward Swordtooth, which lets you play extra lands on each of your turns. So thankfully, uh, with this, as well as all of the Explore Triggers that you're going to be getting off of all of your creatures, it's pretty easy to just start playing out pretty much all of your deck uh, at once, which is kind of insane. <laughs> um, so it's actually a really, really a lot of fun. I've been playing with it a little bit. Uh, some other pieces to this puzzle, obviously, Lanowar Elves is in here for ramp. Uh, as well as just being a cheap creature that you can later play uh, to explore. Uh, Bond of Flourishing just helps you dig through your deck, kind of pick out the cards that you need. Obviously, the big one here is going to be the Citadel, but obviously, if you've already got that, you might need a Walker or a Path of Discovery or something like that. Thankfully, this hits any permanent, uh, so you're really going to be able to pick out the stuff that you need. Uh, Gaia's Blessing is really interesting because it kind of keeps us from milling ourselves. So if we throw this into our graveyard off of an Explore Trigger, it shuffles everything back into your library, which means you can kind of just keep going over and over again. We do only run two of these, uh, but you obviously don't want too many of them. It's really just as a one or two of to, to make sure that you're not uh, uh, milling yourself right off the bat, which is definitely not great. Uh, two Assassin's Trophy is kind of catch-all removal. It's really efficient, obviously. Uh, you can technically use it on yourself if you really, or no, I'm sorry, you can't. Uh, I ran into that issue, actually. Uh, I was thinking you could use it to actually pull out a basic land. You can't, uh, unfortunately, but it is really, really good removal. Hits basically anything that you need it to, uh, which is pretty awesome. Uh, and then Memorial to Folly is another way of, like, returning creature cards that you need, uh, from your graveyard to your hand. So if there's anything in particular that, like, a, a walker, uh, or a sword tooth that you really, really need, uh, this helps you bring that back and make sure all the pieces of the combo are there for you. Uh, pretty basic land base, uh, four overgrown tomb, four cemeteries, eight forests, and then six swamp along with that memorial. Uh, so that's pretty much it. It's going to be a fun one. Uh, I've play tested with this a little bit. We are going to do three casual games with it, so we'll see how it does. All right, guys, here we are for game one with this green black Citadel deck. Again, very, very combo heavy, very interesting deck. Uh, I have seen a lot of people just straight up scoop as soon as you get the combo, which is really funny. Uh, this hand, I'm not a huge fan of, to be honest. It has nothing for the first, like, I mean, you have Gaia's Blessing, which draws you a card, but it really just doesn't do very much. I think, honestly, I have to mulligan this. Uh, it does have some of the big combo pieces, but it's unfortunately just not all that exciting. Uh, in the first few turns, and we do need some stuff to do in the first few turns. This is much better in my opinion. Uh, we can turn one into Lanawar Elf, uh, and then Overgrown Tomb uh, helps us play the Seeker Squire, which I like. Um, do I want the Bond of Flourishing? 
I'm actually going to keep that on top. That'll help us dig uh, for anything that we might need down the road. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and play this into the Llanowar Elf. I just want to go ahead and say, if you do notice that this stream is a bit laggy, or excuse me, the recording's a bit laggy, I do apologize. Uh, as always, I'm running on a Mac, and so the virtual machine uh, is not the best when it comes to that kind of a thing, but we're going to do the best we can. So uh, hopefully we'll be able to see what we're up against. I'm really hoping they don't have any turn one hand destruction. Uh, I did run a control list that was very focused on resource denial in the last video, and it was a lot of fun, but do not want to be up against that right now. Uh, fortunately, that's not the case. So I think here we do just play Overgrown Tomb. Uh, we're going to go ahead and pay the two, and then we will go ahead and play Seeker Squire. Uh, this will hopefully dig us another card deeper, at least be able to fix the top card of our deck. We do want that, uh, so I'm going to keep it. It's not ideal only because uh, we don't necessarily have the next land drop, but we do have bonds of flourish or bonds, excuse me, of flourishing. So hopefully we can actually dig for it in a bit. Um, we are going to get hit with this hawk, which kind of sucks, but uh, ideally we'll be able to race this deck if we can ramp out the citadel pretty quickly. Uh, and we're already up to four mana, so we really only need two more black sources, in particular black sources. That again is kind of the tricky part with this deck uh, on occasion. And so we'll see what we get here. Uh, let's see. So they are going to swing, of course. They gain a life back. That's fine. So here, I'm going to go ahead and play the Bond of Flourishing first uh, and hopefully be able to pull out a Swamp. Yep. Perfect. Uh, go ahead and play that Swamp. And then we'll go ahead and play this. Uh, and I'm not going to swing with the Squire. There's no point, obviously. So... I will just pass. So if we rip a black source off the top, then we do have the Citadel and the Wild Growth Walker to start kind of going off a little bit. We do not have a way of kind of getting around lands on the top of our deck yet, uh, which is obviously a big key to this, but hopefully uh, we'll be able to do something here. So we will see. Okay, that is a black source. So we pay two life and we play the Citadel. Let's see what we can get. Hopefully not a land on top. Ooh, that's a good one. Uh, oh, that's weird. Yes, cast. That's interesting. Um, so we are just going to start casting a bunch of stuff here. Uh, do we play the Citadel? It's a bit risky to play the Citadel, but I'm going to do it. Uh, if we can hit a creature, we're in great shape. Even a land is not the worst. Um, uh, yeah, we do have to select one of these. Okay, so no attacks. All right, well, we're down to it. Next turn, hopefully we can do something cool. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't hit any real creatures there, which kind of sucks. Uh, but we do have a pretty amazing board presence right now. Hopefully they can't deal four damage to us right at the moment. That's the big key. Um, it doesn't look like they'll be able to, which is great. Uh, sorry again, really bad lag today, but hopefully we can get around it. Uh, I don't actually like that blessing very much. Mm. I really don't like this blessing, uh, but I think I have to do it because otherwise I'm just going to end up dying next turn. Uh, yeah. We'll go ahead and shuffle those in. See what we get. So we are down to one life. Can we get? Ugh, that's bad. That's so bad. No, we just lose. Um, it's arguable that we definitely misplayed on that one, but I'm pretty sure, yeah, there's nothing we can do here. We just did not hit a creature, unfortunately. Arguably, we should not have played that, uh, the Bolus's Citadel, um, but that's going to be it for that one. I'll go ahead and concede. Unfortunately, Downside of this deck, if you do not hit a creature, then you can't explore, and then you can't start gaining life, which does kind of suck. We did get all the pieces really early in that game, uh, which is great. It's just a matter of the top of your deck. So uh, we will see how things go. Unfortunately, not the best game one, but hopefully things will look up in game two. All right, here we are for game two against 4-10-14, uh, and hopefully we'll have a little bit of a better game this time. Unfortunately, just a little bit of bad luck on that uh, draw there, but... Uh, this looks like a great keep 
a uh, lot of really good stuff. We've got a little bit of rant. We've got two black sources uh, with the way of finding another one. So I feel pretty good about that. So let's start off with the turn one Lanawar elf and see where we go. Uh, hopefully we'll be able to be, or we'll, we'll see what we're up against here. I don't know. I haven't really figured out what the best matchup is for this deck, to be honest. Uh, some stuff seems great, some stuff seems bad, so I just don't really know, uh, unfortunately. Um, but we'll go ahead and play out the Seeker Squire. Uh, mm, do I want that? We're kind of just on the run for, uh, for the Citadel at this point, so I think I'm going to Graveyard that. Um, and then we'll play out the other Lanawar Elf here. That gets us up to five mana next turn, uh, and ideally we'll be in pretty good shape at that point. We can play the Path of Discovery if need be here, uh, if we just don't have a, a better play. Um, and honestly, no, I think we'll go ahead and play the Bond of Flourishing, uh, just because we really, really want to find that Citadel. Unfortunately, we don't. Uh, so here we will play the Tomb Tapped. Uh, and then we'll go ahead and swing in with all of them, uh, just because at least some damage will get through. Um, and hopefully uh, we can rip a Citadel off the top pretty soon. That's going to be the key card here. Uh, unfortunately against, obviously, a burn-heavy deck, which isn't the worst thing in the world, but it's obviously not the best thing either. Um, let's see. We'll play Woodland Cemetery we can play uh, the Wayward Swordtooth into Swamp, into Path of Discovery. I know that's not uh, super efficient in terms of being able to actually explore, but it does get all of these pieces out pretty quickly. Uh, and at the very least, we are in a commanding position on board uh, with that Swordtooth now able to attack. Uh, that means that we're hopefully going to be able to get in for some damage here. At the very least, just by swinging, uh, which is never a bad thing. <laughs> uh, obviously not what we wanted, but uh, we will go ahead and swing everything over at Rao. My assumption is that this is the Rao combo deck, uh, and so I'd really like to not face that combo uh, if possible. So we will see. This at least gets them in range that they can't... Yeah, okay, that kills Rao. So, I guess we're just really looking for more creatures or a Citadel. Citadel is going to be the biggest, obviously, uh, and the best that we can get. But uh, if we can't get that, more creatures are always ideal because we will be able to explore off of each of them, uh, which is always fantastic as well. <coughs> That's fine. So we're going to get hit for some damage here, which does kind of suck, but uh, it's not the worst thing in the world, to be honest. Um, they're not, I mean, they're drawing some cards and dealing some damage, which is good uh, on for their deck for sure. But uh, as long as we can keep taking care of what's on the field, we should be okay. This card at the top I don't like, obviously. Okay, so here we're going to play Lanawar Elf, uh, exploring and hopefully... There's something good on top. Mm, we're graveyarding that. Uh, as much as I would love to have another uh, Wayward Sword Tooth, that's really not the card we need right now. Um, and I am just going to go swing everything at Rao. They will let him go down. If they have another Rao, that's going to be really annoying. <laughs> uh, they've had two in a row. Uh, no, they don't. That's good. Uh... So let's see, they're going to swing in for a good amount of damage. I am going to block and take out one of them. We don't want to lose too much life here because if we do manage to swing the combo in some way, we really do need a lot of life to work with. Uh, and so dealing as much damage, or saving ourselves, excuse me, as much damage as possible is always a good thing. Um, unfortunately, they are doing a lot here. Uh, but, all right, well, there's the Citadel. Um <laughs> Kind of a bad time to get it, but we will see. We do have a land on top. Uh, Assassin's Trophy. Do I want to play Assassin's Trophy? Uh, that's going to take me down to four. 
that's pretty dangerous territory, if I'm going to be honest. Uh, but it does blow up one of their permanents. Uh, tell you what, let's go ahead and swing in first. We are going to swing in with everything here. Okay. So. Ugh, this is risky. I might be being a little too hasty on this, and I don't know for sure, to be honest. Um, ooh, okay. That's actually really good. So. This is going to start gaining us some life back, which is exactly what we need. That gets us down to two life, which is a bit scary, but it is going to explore. Uh, we want that in the graveyard for sure. And that's going to gain us three life back. So we do go up to five. Uh, don't really like playing this, but we're going to do it. Uh, I'll target myself. I kind of just want sword tooth. Uh, I kind of just want as many creatures as possible at this point because, again, we're just trying to explore as much as possible. Uh, okay, so here, this is where we kind of start to really go off because we do have two wild growth walkers, which means every explore trigger is now getting a six life, uh, which is great. <laughs> uh, that's really helpful. Um, we do get to, because of this being in hand, we get to go ahead and play that out, which is going to explore twice. Uh, so here... We're going to start gaining a lot of life. Uh, we keep that on top. Um, go ahead and cast that. Okay, there we go. So they did concede. And there you can really, really start to see where the combo just starts to go off. You start gaining so much life. Uh, you do get really, really scary low sometimes, and that's a little bit creepy. But uh, we actually managed to get there. So there you can see the power of the deck. Hopefully we have the same luck in game three. But let's go ahead and move on to that one. All right, guys, here we are for game three. We are one and one with this black green Citadel deck. <clears throat> uh, excuse me. Hopefully we get a really uh, nice, nice one this time as well. I'm going to keep this. Uh, we are short on lands long term, but uh, we've got a couple of explore triggers and a way to draw some cards. So I think it's worth keeping. Uh, turn one here, we'll overgrown tomb tapped uh, into a turn two squire. Uh, most likely just to get something on the field as as well as to explore and hopefully find something uh, like a land on top would be great um, We will see what the opponent is trying to do destroy in is the uh, the opponent on this one um, Looks like They're deciding okay, so they've got ooh, that's a good draw uh, Okay, so we will overgrown tomb and are tapped uh, and this does change things slightly depending on what we draw. If we don't draw a land, I'll probably still Seeker Squire first uh, with the Wild Growth Walker as backup. They may thought uh, Racer here. Yeah, that's what it looks like. Uh, so, yep, they're going to take the Walker. So it looks like we're left with just the Squire, which is not great, but also not terrible. Um, so here... I could play Elf, but I do want to get that Squire out. Uh, I think that's going to give me the best option here. I'm going to Graveyard that, because again, we do need lands pretty heavily. Um, but we do now have at least something on the board that they're going to deal with. Uh, or they're going to Thought Erasure again. That's perfectly fine, too. Um, perfectly reasonable to take either the Llanowar Elf or the Jade Light Ranger here. Obviously, I didn't find a land on top, and that's what I'm digging for, so I could see them having taken the elf, but that's fine. Take the Jade Light Ranger. And there we go for Overgrown Tomb. Okay, so first things first, we are going to swing in for two, start dealing a little bit of damage right off the bat. Uh, we will play the elf, uh, and do I want to play Gaia's Blessing? Uh, I don't really think I need to right now. Um, if they take it, it's fine because it just shuffles back into the deck. If they take Path of Discovery, that kind of sucks, but at least then I still have backup plays for next turn. So, uh, Nickel Bolas, do not like to see you, my friend. Uh, this is going to be that God deck or the God Pharaoh deck. Uh, we'll go ahead and discard the Blessing. Uh, that's not terrible, actually. Um, Okay, well, we're going to... Ugh. 
I don't know what the best play is here, to be honest. I think I need to just draw as much as I can, though, to keep finding lands. Uh, so we're going to do this. Shuffle in uh, all three of these, I believe. Um, arguably, that should not have been the play. It could have just been to shuffle in like one or two cards, but that's okay. Uh, and then we'll go ahead and play a Wild Growth Walker. Um, and we will not attack. Uh, so here... What are we looking for? Well, we we really we don't want the Citadel quite yet. We need to wait a turn on the Citadel, unfortunately. Um, but another ex like an Explorer creature would be pretty good because it's going to power up the Walker uh, enough that it gets it out of like burn range. Like uh, Lava Coil probably won't be able to hit things if we can keep exploring. Like if we hit a Jade Light Ranger, that's great. Ah, unfortunately, the Devil takes that one down. That kind of sucks. But uh, they are not swinging in uh so we play memorial and then we play path of discovery and that's kind of it for us uh it's really up to them now uh as to what they do and then we're top decking so ideally we do pull a citadel now uh and then it really we really just don't want to hit a ton of lands uh unfortunately we do not hit the citadel we are going to play lands as much as possible here um, I think we'll go ahead and do this and pull back. Uh, honestly, I think we need to pull the Jade Light Ranger because we really just need to explore as much as possible. Um, it's possible that we should pull the Wild Growth Walker, uh, but as long as we are digging as much as we can, we should be in good shape. So I'll go ahead and play this. We're going to get three Explore Triggers off of this, which is pretty awesome. Uh, and we are 100% just looking for a Citadel. Uh, there is nothing else that we really want. Uh, we do want a sword tooth, but not right now. Um, so I'm just going to pass, and we will see what we get. Um, Citadel is such a powerful card right now, if we can get it. Um, they did shock themselves with that, so I wonder what's up there. I guess they're using Nicol Bolas' ability here. So we will get the god pharaoh here himself here, or the... Uh, arisen, excuse me. Uh, let's see. Yep, take that down. That makes sense. Wild Growth Walker. Uh, yeah, let's play that. Um, gain a little bit of life and see the top card, which is just going to be a land. Ugh, unfortunately, just not getting the cards that we need. Um, we are going to all attack onto... Bolus, we just are going to have to take him out as quickly as possible. Uh, which does mean he's going to have to plus next turn to draw two, uh, which means we should be able to actually take this down next turn, uh, assuming they don't do anything too crazy. Again, another Bedevil. Not too surprising, I suppose, but oh, that's so bad. That is so bad. I don't like this. Um, all right, let's see what we can do. No, 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 no. Not good. Not good, not good, not good. Ugh. Unfortunately, just having very, very, very bad luck on this one. We do kind of just have to keep doing this, uh, unfortunately, because if he does get this plussed up enough, he's just going to be able to take us out. Um, and we don't really care about their life total as much, because, again, once we can take over the game... It's going to be pretty decisive, so we just have to make sure that we can get to the point where we do take over the game. So right now, just trying to keep Bolas off of removing my creatures. Uh, he will be able, of course, to draw him some cards, which sucks, uh, which is probably going to lead to more removal on their end since they are Grixis Control. Um, but that just means that they're tying up their mana into killing some less desirable creatures. And honestly... Uh, they won't matter that much once we get the Citadel, if we can get the Citadel. So at this point, um, they've kind of kind of done their job. Um, we really just want more creatures and more Citadels. So, uh, ugh, not good. Oh, very bad. <laughs> All right. Well, that's bad. That's super bad. Uh, it looks like this game is running away from us a little bit here. Uh, unfortunately, we just haven't drawn the Citadel. Um, We'll go ahead and blow up a forest here, and that's fine. That's not a big deal. Ugh, 
Don't like this, guys. Don't like this. Um, really love this deck. Unfortunately, just not ugh, so bad. <laughs> Unfortunately, just not getting anything that we need here. Um, it really doesn't matter, I suppose, what we do. Uh, so let's just swing it then. Um, unfortunately, at this point, they're just going to be able to plus up, and we can't really net anything out of that. So I'd rather just deal that damage to them. Uh, but they are just going to keep drawing cards, which of course makes sense. Um, but yeah, we're going to be in bad shape here, guys. Unfortunately, our next draw pretty much has to be Citadel, I imagine. Uh, otherwise they're just, I mean, they're taking over already. Um, I'm, it's very possible that they just have counter spells, uh, as well. Um, but they instead have Ugin, which is totally fine. Perfectly normal. Oh my goodness. All right. Well, this is real bad. We really need Citadel like now. Uh, that'd be great. Oh, hello. Hey, yes, you. Okay, please don't do anything stupid. Okay, land, not great. Enters taps, that's fine. That's that's fine. Bond of Flourishing, please. Ugh. Okay, yeah, we take it. That's fine. Please not land. Okay, yes. Yes. Okay, maybe. <laughs> oh, this is so bad. Uh, graveyard. We really need Wild Growth Walker. Ooh, do I want that? I don't know that I want that. No, actually, I think I do. I think I do want that, because uh, I'm going to need to blow some stuff up here. Uh, what is the most high priority thing? Um, uh, honestly, I don't know. I don't know the Nicol Bolas stuff as well uh, as I probably should. This has the highest loyalty, so we're going to go with that. Crap, we have a land on top. Well, that's bad. That's super bad. Um, I mean, we do have the Citadel out, so there's still a chance, maybe. Um, <laughs> but we are facing a good deal of pressure here with these Planeswalkers uh, that, unfortunately, we do not have great answers to. Uh, and if they blow up the Citadel... Okay, so definitely should have taken out Ugin. My mistake. 100% a misplay. Uh, in which case, yeah, definitely messed up on that one. But um, still kind of fun to just play the deck. I don't know. Try to be positive, guys. <laughs> uh, can't. Unfortunately, uh, this is where knowing the game better would have been very helpful. Because um, I don't believe, yeah. And, yeah, at this point... There is very little we can do. We're going to give it one more turn. Uh, if we do get a Citadel next turn, then there's still a chance. But I think uh, other than that, we're pretty much done. Um, I did want to mention also, uh, thank you to everybody that entered the giveaway. Uh, we had This was by far our biggest giveaway yet. You guys actually helped us get to... Uh, not only a thousand subscribers, but 1100 subscribers. So you, we actually surpassed our year end goal already. Thanks to all of you guys. So thank you so much. We really appreciate it. Uh, Isaac was the winner uh, and congratulations to him. Uh, your bundle is already on the way. I've already talked to you about it, but uh, it should be there hopefully by the end of the week. Uh, and I really appreciate everybody supporting the channel. It's been fantastic. Your support has been truly, truly amazing. Um, to see how far we've grown in just a week, but also just over the last two years, which we did have our two-year birthday on uh, April 30th, which was pretty cool. Uh, didn't actually realize it was coming up that soon, but it was a lot of fun. Uh, and let's see. Yep. I think I'm calling it. Uh, we definitely lose next turn. So unfortunately, that is going to be it for this one. I'm going to go ahead and concede. Uh, definitely misplayed there, could have blown up the Ugin, definitely should have blown up the Ugin, uh, but, uh, unfortunately, I don't think it would have mattered as much, I mean, we definitely would have been in a, a slightly better position, because we still would have probably had the Citadel out, uh, but, 
Um, they had so much pressure in terms of planeswalkers that we were kind of in a bad position no matter what. So regardless, that is the deck. It's a very, very fun one. I highly suggest building this one. It was actually first uh, shown to, by, to me uh, from MTG Goldfish, uh, Seth over there. Uh, better known as Saffron Olive, actually posted it. Uh, really, really fun deck. Definitely highly suggest checking it out and playing with it. Uh, but with that, I think I'm going to get out of here. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next arena video.